Hey guys, you're watching the best practices show. We take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all, all, all across the country. And we're going to dig deep into the whole image aspect of your practice and what your patients see. And I've got dentistry's image expert today. And we're going to talk about secrets of photography in this ever changing landscape. Janice Hurley. So you do not want to miss this. Do me a favor, grab a pen and hit the share button. We'll see you in a second. Hey guys, welcome back to the best practices show. And we, like I said, we're just having so much fun and getting so much great feedback about the shows to shoot and the things that you want to see. And I've got my good friend back for another show who gives us great advice all the time. And one of the areas that we need advice in, especially the men, I don't want to make that a generalization because there are some men out there that have style, but for me, I don't have any style and I need help. And this is the person who gives me help and who's going to help you today. Now, uh, and we're going to be talking about photography, which is different than video in what we were uh, examining in our last show. So a couple things before we get started, a couple show notes, we are shooting this live on Facebook. So do me a favor, as you have questions, feel free to add them to the feed because I want to make sure you get the most out of this and we get you the answers that you want. And I'm going to encourage everybody to keep asking great questions. We're getting phenomenal questions and I just want to reward that behavior and we're giving away a free Apple iWatch and two tickets to activate, which is our, our uh, practice growth seminar, which is almost sold out for June. So if you're thinking about going, get signed up now because it will be closed in no time. So my guest today, who's been a good friend of mine for a very long time, and always makes me up my game. Uh, and uh, she is dentistry's image expert. And uh, Janice, you know, I, I had you introduce yourself in the last one, but I'm just going to say this, you know, you, you hate it when I say this, but you're the best dressed person in all of dentistry. I mean, you're just, you walk into a room, you're like, just rock star, solid quality. And, and, uh, uh, and that's one component in, in an industry that really needs your help. The second one is, and I'll be a little bit edgy here by saying this, you know, in the United States, we are not good at style. Like I look at my European friends and my UK oh, friends oh. and people overseas and you see these dentists and these teams and they look good. I mean, they're really into style and, and color selections. And we're just kind of, have we become numb to this? Why is this such an important subject on image in the United States? You're absolutely right. I was just speaking at AACD and you could definitely tell who the Europeans were, right? You could mm -hmm. tell who was from Germany, who was from the Netherlands, who was from Spain. And then unfortunately, uh, oftentimes those of us in the US, we look sloppy. I would, I would say that, that was, that's the most common thing. And that um, I get asked all the time, how would I possibly implement a dress code? And the fact is as a business owner, you have to figure out what the persona is that you wanna emulate. You have to know what your brand is and be consistent with your team members. And in fact, your team will feel more secure the more confident you are and the more um, consistent you are about your brand. So yeah, it's definitely a problem in the U.S. And the reason it's important is uh, perception is reality, right? Yeah. Perception is reality. So if you see a box of Godiva chocolates, it's in a gold box and it's got a beautiful ribbon on it and you're expecting to have a great experience. And in fact, you will, right? There's been time and energy and high quality put into those Godiva chocolates. And that's different than the little Hershey's chocolates. Um, and, th and that might be different. So your patients um, make decisions about the quality of care and how much you're respecting them and how much you respect yourselves based on your grooming and your professional attire. So minimal, um, there needs to be protocol for that. And every single team member uh, should look the same in the back and the front desk. Um, there's a choice between professional attire or uh, scrubs or lab jackets as well. But you're right, you're absolutely right. That's, that's one piece of it. 
And before you do team photos and before you figure out the photography for your practice, you want to figure out that brand. So, and choosing the colors and the style should be affected by the color of your uh, dental practice itself. So yeah, very interesting. And it's old school to do one color on Monday, another color on Tuesday. No, everybody wears the same color and it's throughout the week that you work. But thanks for asking. Yeah. And I'm going to continue to ask the tough questions too, because if I'm a dentist watching this, I'm like, Janice, I don't like confrontation. Like, how do I tell these, you know, mostly females around me, you know, don't dress like that. And I, I'll just say this, it's your business. You get to decide the image that comes from your business. And it's not wrong to have this in writing and tell your team members how to dress. I mean, great businesses do it all the time. You don't see people at the Apple store wearing a whole bunch of different stuff every day, do you? No. And if you go to In-N-Out Burger, everyone's wearing the same thing. You know when you're at In-N-Out Burger versus you're at Taco Bell, right? Right. And they Absolutely. didn't decide one day to wear the hat and another day to, to wear the apron. So you want it in writing. And I invite anybody, um, your listeners, to go to my website. Uh, just Google my name, Janice Hurley, Dentistry's Image Expert. And there is a step-by-step um, -step guideline with some great photos that you can talk about with your team and decide where it is you want to go. So the first step would be to uh, have a meeting with your team and say, I'm so sorry that I haven't been clear. I've let this lapse. It's not been um, a good indicator of what a strong leader I am or what my preferences are. So let's um, identify what is professional within our practice. And that goes from whether you chew gum or have the cell phone in office or whether you sit down with the patient, what, what is professional. And there's nothing wrong with uh, implementing it and being consistent about it. Um, and then a side note before we talk about photographs, I think the doctor should pay for the uniforms from head to toe. That means the shoes, the socks. I think the doctor should pay for the loops, all the things that um, allow your team members to deliver quality care for your patients. It's going to it's going to make you money. It doesn't cost you money. It right. makes you money, makes you money. So we're yeah. all about best practices, right? Yeah. And I totally agree with you. You can't look at these things as costs, they're investments because you will find team members work hard and they live oftentimes paycheck to paycheck. So if you yes. ask them to do this on their own, they're going to yes. do it within the best budget they have and it yes. may not be to your standard. So yep. just pay for it. Be happy that you did yes. and be proud that you're investing in these people. Yeah. Yeah. So now the photography thing, Photography is changing every year. Like, you know, you just got back from the AACD. You see this, like photography is not just photography anymore. Now it's a whole art and science. And so you're getting to watch the ever-changing landscape of photography. And what do we need to know about this? And why is photography so important now in dentistry more than ever? Oh, yes. It became so exciting with digital photography. So many times offices will have these great cameras and these great lenses in the office because they're taking before and after a patient's of headshots or their dentistry. And now what you want to make sure you're doing is projecting the right image through photography for your practice. So old school, um, Kurt, used to be long text that was written out on your website, right, that nobody read, and they're right. certainly not going to read now. And it said, we're a warm, welcoming practice. We want kids, so on and so forth. So instead, now you make sure to stage a photo with a professional photographer or somebody who's really, really good in your practice. They better be just about professional level. And um, you stage that photo of your doctor doctor with the children and those children have smiling faces. So it's much more about the warm, happy look on their face than it is uh, long text. People just aren't going to read the text. They're going to look at that photo and decide whether to uh, investigate you more or not. In fact, the average uh, patient who hasn't selected you yet will look at five different dental sites, whichever five come up on the first page. And when you make sure to have a great photo, when they first click on that, that first page, that's what you want to do. And the other yeah. thing, Kurt, is making sure that you're checking to see what your website looks like on the mobile app, because that's where about 75% of people are checking you out. It's on their phone. They're not going back home to their computer. So very, very important that your photos are higher level. They're going to be done as well as a stock photo would be done, but you don't want to use all stock photos anymore because we quickly recognize them. We quickly right. recognize them. So we want to make them more personal. 
Yeah, I get to see the same stock photos on hundreds of dental websites, and this must be the most popular patient of all time. So, <laughs> and I'm joking, <laughs> of course. Now, you know so much about t- photography. How did you get into this? Like, how did you get involved with photography? Because you really have become an expert in this area. Thank you. Yes. I think one of my proudest moments was to have my client, Dr. Jeff Berger. I took his photo when I was on the cover of the Progressive Magazine. So that was that was a highlight. But I started about seven years ago when my youngest daughter, Melissa Hurley, was competing at the CrossFit Games. And yeah. she was you know, brand new. She was on a team that was uh, on the lower level. And though uh, there were professional photographers there, um, they wouldn't be taking her photos. So I wanted her to have documented um, photos of these great moments. And as I started doing that year after year, a couple things happened. One is that I'm always going to up my game to the highest, best level that I can, because I always want the best results. And then uh, sure enough, Uh, In 2014, her team won the games. So ESPN had her all over the screen. They had all these professional photos, but they used one of my photos in their program for 2015. So, uh, yeah, I'm really proud of photography and I use it with my clients. I use it with my clients for before and after photos when they come to San Diego and have makeovers done with me. I'll use my camera tomorrow when I have a two-day workshop for uh, six women that are coming for image here in San Diego. I I use them with my clients to take photos when I go in on a 30 point assessment. It's, it's, um, it's an effective way to communicate um, my clients in the very best light when they're feeling the very best about themselves. I want to take their photos. Yeah, absolutely. We just got a great comment from Bob Wydra. As a photographer, get a professional who knows how to shoot for social. And uh, an example, leave enough area to have text as it gets much a much better response. And so you need some negative space in a photo. Can you first of all tell us what that is? And then um, uh, where would we start? Like, Let's say I don't have a budget for a professional photographer. Where would I start and what are some of the considerations that I can use for photography so I don't get myself in trouble? Good point. Good point. And he's absolutely right. Um, you 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 want to shoot majority of them horizontal because they play best on Facebook and and other aspects places where you're going to use them. But instead of looking at it at all that you can't afford a professional photographer, you've got to budget that in. So let me give you some guidelines. Okay, maybe you're not going to have a five thousand dollar budget, but you could have a twelve hundred dollar budget. This and this is the way it should be done. The the better photographers will charge two to three hundred dollars an hour, and that's what they're going to charge when they're in your office. And you will have done the homework by figuring out which photo shot shots you want, what you're trying to depict, and they're going to bring the right lens and they're going to know the right settings. And um, but you will have controlled the background to make sure that uh, it doesn't look busy at, at all. And so just like we used to. Um, have a marketing budget that included the yellow pages or hopefully now we have a marketing budget that includes a new patient gift and a VIP gift. You can't practice these days, um, Kirk, without professional photography. We're visual, visual people now, right? So I would tell you what's happening is we're spending less and less on the cost of developing our website, less on websites. The cost of websites themselves are going down. But you want a professional photographer every six months, to come in for three hours and that $300 that they might be charging per hour is not just while they're there, they're going to go back and they're edit and they're going to give you photographs afterwards. But here's my experience and words of wisdom on photographs. It's like clothes. You don't need a lot of photos. You need the right photos. So I'm not impressed. I don't want a hundred photos where I have to weed out and find my best 10. I want to make a list for that professional photographer as to what I'm trying to communicate. I'm trying to communicate the handshake here, or I'm trying to communicate. This is who my team is. And um, I think you and I talked about this earlier, the type of photos that we're using now for team photos, those are really changing, right? They're changing old school was we lined them all up against a wall. Um, or out against the ivy that was on the building, um, or we stood them you know, pointing to the sign, and we don't do that anymore. I, if you had 25 team members, I would still tell you, don't take photos that are any more than six people. You wanna show 
the connection to the team members, to each other. You want to stage it. You want to make sure that the photo you choose has everybody's facial expression being really warm and happy. So right. brag to someone else that you've got 25 team members, um, but, but just take two or three photos together at the same time. Um, yeah. Extremely impactful. That, that's old school to line everybody up. It is so, I'm just laughing out loud to myself when you say that because I can't count the number of, dental team photos that the temp was there that day, you know, and she's got her scrubs on and she looks like this. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then the other one that you mentioned, I saw a dental team, they had 25, 30 members and you could see some of the faces had been Photoshopped, you know, like it's oh, so uh. pathetic, like, come on, we're smart enough. And cause you know, it can, it potentially, you're going to change some of these faces and you really, so I think those are great rules of thumb when it comes to photography. And really I've heard this, is this true? You know, the secret in photography is the eyes, the eyes tell uh, the whole story yeah. in a great photo, you know, like, it's not so much the face or the lips but when you see the eyes you go they're having fun like yes. they're really you know so um what other considerations these are great rules for photography Thanks. so let me tell you a little bit about my guidelines or my direction to people um, on what it takes to take a good photo so i right. start off first by telling them love the lens like so right now i'm looking into the lens um, that you're videotaping and I'm not looking down at your face, but I'm looking at the lens. And as long as my mind is thinking warm, wonderful thoughts, which is, I love this experience. This is so much fun. My eyes will communicate that. So instead of thinking about smiling with your mouth, think about smiling with your eyes and being happy and your face will follow suit. All right. right. So that's the first right. tip. That's great. The second, the second tip is whatever is closest to the camera will look the largest. Okay. Whatever's closest to the camera will look the largest. So let's play a little game with you, all right? So tip back and put, go back, go back, go back. Yeah, there you go. See how small your head got? Well, yeah. all right. So you are a brawny dude now with a really full chest, right? right. But you look like a little pinhead. So right. you're smarter when you're videotaping this. You're leaning forward. Yeah. And you're having a discussion with me and your head looks larger and, and better in proportion to your, to your body. And when we lean forward a little bit in a photo, it um, gives the impression that we're happy or uh, excited about taking that photo versus as soon as I pull away from you, go ahead, pull your chin back. Just pull your chin back, not your body. Come, okay. Bring your body up close again. Now pull your chin back. Right. As soon right. as I see anything like that, that tells me that you're uncomfortable being with me. And one of the right. common things we do as we get a little older, we get a little bit of a double chin. Oh, It'll yeah. happen to you in the next 20 years, maybe not, not right now. Right. And when we get that double chin, we think, oh, let me pull it up because then you won't see it. When in fact, I saw it a little bit before and now I see it even more. So instead, right. same thing, just pull your uh, chin forward a little bit, right. just a little bit. And tuck it down. Just tuck it down a little. And then my eyes are going to look at the lens and I'm going to smile. I'm going to smile with my eyes, right? Very and then cool. as soon as you feel your face getting too stiff, I just go. <laughs> I shake Let's out see. my face. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then makes the photographer laugh. It makes me laugh. And then I can be more natural and energetic. Some of the other guidelines on taking good photos is the most flattering lighting is the outdoor lighting. So it can be diffused, right? It can be diffused through a window at your, at your uh, treatment room, if that's where you want to take it, or it's outdoor lighting early morning or late evening, if you're, it's not diffused between glass. But um, and stay away from shadows. Those are really hard on you. Stay away from that overhead lighting that's within the practice. Whenever you have really strong overhead lighting, it's going to make um, circles underneath our eyes. So both you and I have lights that are shining directly on our face right now so mm -hmm. that we don't get those, sh those shadows underneath. Um, another great place, great place to use photos is take Take pictures of your two hygienists. They're warm and friendly, beautiful teeth. They're, you know, standing right next to each other and smiling. And use them in those emails on your reminders, right? So instead of the reminder, just saying it's a reminder, but, you know, it's confirming that appointment. As soon as it has that uh, beautiful picture of that hygienist on that card, it makes that practice stand out. It makes right. it more personal and you're making a connection. So that is a great way. idea. I love that. 
Love that. Now the question always comes up because dentists are, they get geeky about this. You know, do I start with my phone? Do I move to an, you know, SLR camera? Like what, just give us some very simple thoughts on how do I start, get started and how do I get better? Sure. We talked earlier about video and it's perfectly fine to use your iPad or use your iPhone um, to, to take video. When it comes to photography, you're not going to get high enough resolution. So it's a professional photographer, professional photographer, professional mm-hmm. photographer. It's, there are the right cameras, the right lens, and they'll know the difference. Um, a, a really important place, um, Kirk, to take have a professional photograph done is the curb appeal of your practice. So I, I just got through speaking at, I think, five different conferences in the last for weeks. And each time I pulled up a dental practice randomly that I knew was going to be at the conference. And I went to the photos that they had, and they had one of two things. They had not uh, claimed their Google site. So it's a aerial photograph or satellite photo of their street, something very unattractive. And that's what's put right there on their Google site as being the exterior of their building or they had taken a photo that was very unattractive of their building, even though they had a good looking building because they took it at the wrong time and with the wrong lens. So first impression, lasting impression, extremely important. So that's not where we're going to save money. So I think you're gonna make more money attracting the right type of patients with a professional photographer than you are buying one more gadget or instrument that you don't get to use for the type of dentistry that you want if you don't attract the right type of patients. Right. And what you're really talking about is being intentional about what people see when they look at your practice. Now, you mentioned this last time in health grades, you can upload video proactively. Can you do this with photos? And would you also do this with like a Yelp? Because a lot of dentists don't proactively populate a Yelp site you right. know, they just let it get populated. How Good point. is that true or false to, to true, do it with True, me? so true. Okay. So it's all those review sites, whether it's health grades or Yelp or Google or yellow pages or whatever is popular in your area where people go with, that come up and reviews. If you don't put in your own really good headshot into that, and it needs to be nice cropped, nice and tight. So it takes up about 75% of that space. They're going to put a black silhouette there. So that means that patient that's trying to choose you over the next doctor, over the next doctor, I'm choosing somebody that feels good enough about themselves to have a headshot. So that's right. very important. Don't skimp on that and um, have fun and you can project anything you want. You can look as warm and friendly as you want and know that there's nothing wrong with a lab jacket. A lab jacket won't scare patients away, but a very stern face or if you're nervous about that camera, that's what scares people away. Yeah. And then I'm going to ask you this question too. Um, suit and tie for men, do you, you know, cause you do see these stuffy pictures, uh, you know, how, what is your professional opinion about, uh, these headshots of the dentist and the team? Do you have an opinion on those? You're always asking yourself, who is my audience and how do I want them to perceive me? Right. Do you hear that? That is what you asked yourself when you're going to do. That's what I asked myself before I got dressed for my time with you today. Who is my audience? Mm -hmm. And how do I want them to perceive me? So if I live in an area of San Francisco, that's the business district, and that's where I want to draw my patients from, then I might wear, if I'm a a male dentist, I might wear a shirt and um, tie. If it's more cool and contemporary, I'm in um, Palo Alto. Uh, As a female, I I, I might not wear a jacket at all. I might wear a bright colored dress. Um, Still, again, the most important thing is that you feel really comfortable in that, but never a golf shirt and always make sure that the clothes fit really well and that the coloring that you're wearing looks good on your skin tone and it looks good on the colors that you've chosen for your website. Okay. And I have another one for you that I do get. This is a good question that I get. You know, you walk through a dentist's office and you can see some people subscribe to having teeth everywhere. Look at what we did here. Well, and then others don't do that. They are more focused on the patient's story and the overall picture. Like, do you have an opinion on that? Because there are offices, you've been in them where it's teeth everywhere. There's teeth on the walls as far as you can see. Do you, what do you, what do you suggest on that type of photography? You know, you're right. It's 
changing. What we used to do is the retracted teeth and then the after photos. And we'd had books in the reception area that would show all of that. And number one, most patients have no idea what they're looking at on the before. And oftentimes if you don't show or say before and after and have the rest of the teeth restored to immaculate consideration, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be showing those. But what is more in line or on trend is that you're going to show the happy smiling face of that patient and you're going to have um, maybe something in your book that's their review or their testimonial and you can talk about the fact that you do bonding and you in Invisalign and some of these other aspects but you want to show happy people happy families and you want to show the age and the type of person that you want to attract they don't have to have had a whole lot of dentistry done from you, but it has to look like you made people very happy and very beautiful. Right. And you don't have to purposely make the first before shot a mug shot because you see some dentists do that. They do the mug shot, you know, and then no. the patient's all glorious and happy. Um, I do you have lose, some. You lose credibility when you do yes. that. When you yeah. do the before and afters, you want to make sure if it's a woman, their lipstick was the same color. You want to make sure it's taken with the exact same backdrop. You want to make sure that the head is tilted or straight the same way, has to be cropped. Um, in order for us to believe you, you can't do a bad job on the before and then Photoshop the after. Yeah, absolutely. So, and then others, you know, if I'm, again, if I'm watching this and I haven't invested in photography, what are some other things that I might want to consider? Start small and and go online to see what professional photographers and the type of photos that they've taken. So I'd rather you shorten the time that you use someone, but who doesn't have $600 to attract uh, 600 more patients? And, right. you know, I'm a business consultant for dentists and I cringe at the number of managed care plans that we put ourselves on the amount of money we pay uh, in supplies and staffing, and we won't spend what we need to do to promote the best image. Um, perception is reality, and if you don't invest in it, you can't really complain when your neighboring uh, dentist uh, sees the type of patients you only wish you could see. Yeah, and I got a great question from Ashton Prince, our friend out. Uh, great question, Ashton. Uh, he says this, he asked this, how often do you suggest changing the photos or layout to stay with the trends also so patients and prospective patients don't con you know, continually see the same photos? What do you suggest? Yeah, I suggest you uh, take photos, lots of photos, um, every six months and um, give them to the person that's managing your social media uh footprint and on your website, change them out at least once a year. That's what I would be doing, but right. I'm taking them every six months. Right. Right. So and then I've you, got this, this large group to draw from. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you this too. How do I research finding a good photographer? I don't know. Uh, you know, where yeah. do I start? Like there's a lot to choose from you. You type in photographer and your town, you're going to see a ton. Yes, yes, yes. And the beauty, though, is they're going to have their library listed and you get to see the type of work that they did. So I recently hired a photographer when I spoke at the Western Regional Dental Conference. I knew that this was a course where I was going to have over 500 people in the class. So I thought it'd be a great opportunity to take photos. And I was able to look at the type of photography that she did. I sent her a couple examples of the type of photography I wanted. So if you've seen good photos from anyone else, give your photographer kind of a heads up and some guidelines. So the more that you can guide them, the better. But I don't think we're going to struggle as much with not finding the right photographer because just like you said, there's so many out there. Um, I think we're going to struggle... Um, making the time, putting it on our calendar, and taking that leap of faith. So if you do your homework, which is you've decided what it is you want to project, when you have scheduled the patients and you can show the photographer what type of end results um, you like. So for example, I like a photo, I like a settings on my camera so such that the patient um, and the face of the patient is, is very clear and in focus. And I like the settings on the camera such that it's more um, buttery in the background so right. that the focus is here. If you happen to like everything in focus, then that's what you want to show your photographer. So if you don't get good results, can I be brave enough to say you probably didn't do the work? 
Please. Yeah, absolutely. Now I'm, I don't mean to get mired down in the weeds, but I do get this question too. You know, when it comes to consent with photos, um, cause everybody asks that, do you ask, do you have a form? Do you do the beginning? What about social media considerations for consent? Can you just speak to that? Sure. When your patient arrives, you have them sign a universal form that allows you, you to use uh, their image in all of your marketing uh, materials. And they know that that's what you're going to be uh, asking them to do. And they also know that you're going to only put them in the very best light. So right. yeah, you, I have them sign it before we even start. Before you even so is start. That helpful? Yeah, that is helpful because you just can't take these photos and use them. You now need even yeah. team members. Do you need team members per permission yeah, to use them yeah, too? And I think that, yeah. okay. And okay. it's simple enough, right? You just have the form. It shouldn't be too complicated and mention attorney and lawyer too many times. That'll scare right. any of us away. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And with the, you know, again, this ever changing landscape of photography, we just know that it really works. You know, you, you hear about this all the time. Visual communication is just completely trumping everything. And so yep. um, as a dentist or as a team member or as a professional, that is, photography is just a cornerstone. So um, I do want to ask you this because it's such good information. If I'm struggling with where to start, Janice, how mm -hmm. do I get a hold of you? How does this work? You do a, a head to toe uh, on practices where you'll come out and take a look not only at the photography, but how they dress, mm -hmm. their um, their overall grooming habits. Like you have a good way of saying the difficult stuff Thank you. That, nobody, that nobody wants to talk about. You're like, hey, I don't want to bring this up. Let's just have Janice bring it up. And you'll do it in a very thoughtful, considerate way, which people won't get offended, right? Thank you. Yes, yes. My, my whole goal is that when you're around me, you feel better about yourself and you've been able to ask the questions and follow through on actions that would make you feel more comfortable. So I do a 30 point assessment on site. So it's on site. I'll travel to your practice the first half of the day or no patients. And I have reviewed your website and I've talked with the doctor about the areas of, of interest that they might have. And they want to make sure we focus on work with the team on that. And um, because I'm on site, even if it's such a thing as is how often you're the type of photos that you're taking uh, on your new patient exam or on the hygiene exam, right? We have it right there. We can pull it up. And then in the afternoon you see patients. And then the next day we meet again and uh, we have a half day again without, without patients. And we come up with a plan and people make commitments and they decide what it is. And then over the next two months, we have conference calls a little bit like you and I are having right now. And um, we, that's the way we get to make progress. Um, can I end this by telling you that um, it's very hard for any of us to see ourselves. And right. that many a time when I've seen a photograph of myself, was when I decided I would make a change. I would do something different. So even you and I, when we first started doing this show, I did it out of my home and the lighting wasn't perfect. And I said, that that's not a good reflection of who I am and what I want right. to bring. So I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm have studio time and the same thing applies with your team. I, I would ask you to just take a photo from head to toe over the next four days at your dental practice and let everybody see themselves. So front side and back, am I projecting, um, am I projecting the most professional image possible and photographs don't lie. Um, you're just now seeing what everybody else sees. So Thank right. you so much for having me on. You're so generous to host well, me. Well, you've always been a good friend. You're very thoughtful you. and uh, you truly are brilliant on all of these things that we desperately need help with. And I'll just say this about this profession that we love so dearly. You would hope people don't judge a book by its cover, but they do. They absolutely do. do. Yeah. And so and if, you want to make sure the cover of your book is a good reflection of what's inside, right? Exactly. That's exactly it. You summed it up beautifully. Well, I'm just very grateful. So, you know, if you have questions for Janice, please reach out to her. We put a link to her website right in here. Um, at the very least, if you're just struggling, just have her take a look Email at everything. I'll be it glad is, to answer any questions. It is awesome because again, I have blind spots everywhere and she'll just go change that. And she does it in such a good way that you're like, okay. And then people, I, I will tell you everything you've asked me to do, I get comments on them and I'm like, oh, cool. You know, so Thank it you. all does work and uh, it's very important. 
and how your patients perceive your experience in you. So thank you for being on, Janice. I appreciate it. And we're going to cover a My lot pleasure. of different topics. Now, I want you to just stay on for a little bit because uh, um, I want to chat with you just about a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, but um, thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate it. And we're so grateful. If you find today valuable, do me a favor, hit the share button, tell your friends. Uh, it's growing every day. And again, we just couldn't be more grateful. So until we see you next time, keep watching the best practices show. You guys have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.